Well, great. Well, uh, um, good morning from Minnesota. I'm uh, very pleased to have uh, Chaku Chakravarti here, uh, professor at uh, the uh, Indian Institute of, I'm sorry, I had that. The technology. Technology, IIT. yes, IIT, Bombay. And uh, I'm so excited about this because uh, the cooker that you have been working on and uh, students, uh, the window mounted or what we sometimes call the through the wall oven because it could be pounced into a wall or hung off a balcony. I'm excited because in my neighborhood we have one of the public high-rise buildings here and uh, th about two-thirds of the apartments have enough sun to actually do some cooking. You know, about a third of them facing directly toward the, toward the equator. I like to start saying the equator rather than south so I don't exclude the southern hemisphere. <laughs> but, uh, and it's just a, a really cool design. Um, so if, if you could just first start off with how did the, a solar cooker enter the picture for your team there to uh, design? Uh, well, when did, what was the very beginning of this? Yeah, that, it was very interesting. Uh, we, 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 we are teaching a design program. So when we, uh, when we teach design, then we keep uh, finding out when there is so much uh, provision from the government, subsidies from the government, why don't people use it? So that was a question we were asking ourselves. And then we said, let us go and find out. So we went out there and like there was some enthusiasts we had a small balcony, he had one dish and he had one, you know, window mounted oven and he was like cooking every day. And then we went to a lot of other homes and we said, oh, it's so difficult to go out to the sun and cook. We, I wish it was like a microwave oven inside your house. So then, the, you know, it all comes from the people, you know, it's not our idea. They said, like, it has to be convenient. And like, you know, so that's how the whole idea was born. Then I said, why can't it be fitted like a window air conditioner because we have air conditioners on the window so i said why can't we do that so that way we started the project it was a student project and it was very interesting and then uh, it's a long journey we have the video which we can show you how we went about later on but that's the whole cha challenge yeah sure I, I can tell you that uh in 2020 i made it to the uh, console foods conference in portugal and uh, i was designated uh the uh host of a, a forum of people on how to promote solar cooking to get people to adopt it. And there were two or three fellows from Madrid, Spain, which is uh, like a lot of cities that they build, they've been building up rather than out. And so they have high rises and uh, they all three said, uh, you know, we can't do it because we're in these high rises. And I said, no, wait, <laughs> Bill and Kulkarni, who I interviewed for my, for my channel, I had come up with that sun dish, you know, which is, it's like a, He's, he designed it based on the shell of a, a seashell uh, of a clam of some sort. And uh, it has just the right uh, angle to catch the sun for two or three hours without, without having to shift it around. And so he said, so go look this up, talk to Mill and, and get set up. And now we have another option. And uh, I recall earlier, there was the idea of calling it the sun rice. That was uh, part of the discussion. But now you call it the solar cooker. Uh, tell me about yeah. all that. Uh, evolved from the original thought. It's, it, it's, it's very interesting. When we uh, professors think about design, we don't think about business. We went to this business town in uh, you know, Ahmedabad and this businessman said, Professor, you don't know how to sell a product. You call it a rice cooker and then it will sell in India. You don't call it an oven and you know, people don't even know about ovens here. On this part of the so then at that time we called it the you know uh, like sunrise we said you cook you know rise with sun and then we still not you know we still not branded it uh, and then what happened one of our students started this company uh, called Ola which competes with Uber in India in a very big way just four letters Ola and you know like they're like loggerheads with Uber and they're doing very well. Then some of our students said, Professor, we need to have a catchy name like, you know, Ola. So we'll call it Sola. So that, that's how the name changed to Sola. But still we are, you know, at it and we're not still, you know, like we, we, we're still starting a company uh, to see to take it to market. Uh, and like, you know, uh, we are in our third pilot production and uh, we got very good results this time. Uh, like, you know, and I'm sell sending teams of students to different parts of the country where the temperatures are as high as 46, 42. 
and once it was 48 and we could compete with a gas towel. So it's as good as that. Well, that's fantastic. The uh, uh, I'm sure once once you get to the point of marketing, uh, there will be plenty of uh, shots of rice in the probably in the, uh, uh, Tiffin pots, right? I mean, you use a lot of Tiffin pots there. Actually, that's the question with the, the volume because uh, you've got the long, that's a polycarbonate uh, transparent exterior shell. Is that two of them kind of nested together? So you have like a heat trap in between or is it just one? Exactly. Exactly. In fact, there are two polycarbonate shells and we have uh, all the thermal analysis done and we have a gap of 10, 12 mm, 10 to 12 mm between the two polycarbonates. And that is the whole trick. That 10 mm is good for our cooking. We don't need, we need, don't need vacuum. We don't need foam. We need nothing inside. Just that air gap is a good enough insulator and polycarbonate is a great material for letting all the heat in and not let any heat go out. And, you know, it was so interesting that once it was, you know, a lot of sun, there was sun and there was some rain. It was cold literally outside. When I touched the solar cooker, it was cold. And then inside it was hot because the sun was there. So that, you know, proved the, you know, efficacy of polycarbonate, especially for the rays to go in and, you know, heat the insides. Uh, whatever may be the temperature outside doesn't matter. It could be cold, but as long as the sun is there, you know, uh, uh, the temperature goes up. Sure. And the inside, that is that uh, aluminum or what type of metal? And you have painted it black, yeah. enamel? So, uh, so Luther, earlier when we started our work, uh, we were very inefficient. That is, we had two polycarbonates and we just had our cooking bowl, black color, in aluminum. But it didn't work. So what we had to create is we either had to, cre we created an aluminum heat sink in black color, which has the coating. So now I have the solar cooker, which is a double wall, you know, like what, I'm sorry, not carrying the model, uh, the, the solar cooker. And inside that now there is a full tray of aluminum. So the heat comes and the tray actually absorbs all the heat and through convection and conduction a little bit, uh, it cooks uh, in the utensil. So the tray is all around, you know, like, like the way you have those coatings on uh, like vacuum flasks for uh, doing your, uh, you know, uh, solar water heating. So the black aluminum, uh, you know, coated uh, the inside tray is actually our, you know, heat generator. It catches all the heat and gives it to the cooking surface. And then you have, of course, a black body, you know, like uh, utensil to cook. Sure. And, and what kind of volume are we speaking of here? Be I, uh, we I, are speaking what? about uh, at least four liters uh, in two boxes to, to seven liters easily. Wow. That's a lot of, that's a lot of food. So that's that's a lot of, uh, being, luckily, it, uh, like four liters would be good to say. Seven liters is a little large because seven will take a long time to cook. Uh, it'll take around four hours to cook rice, but two liters of rice cooks in two hours. Uh, when you soak it for an hour. So we always have to see all our, it's very interesting. We learned Luther, whenever you're using any of these sustainable technologies, you have to, you, you start, uh, you know, you start learning the techniques, you start, you know, like loving the preparation, you start, you know, working towards it. So those are the things which we are also learning. And that's so important that you can't go with any of the other things and say, Oh, uh, you know, here, I don't need to soak it, but why do I need to soak it here? But you soak rice and it, it cooks so well in the solar cooker. So fast also. If you don't soak it, it takes a couple, uh, an hour more. But if you soak it, it takes just two hours sure. or one and a half hours. Yeah. Well, and I, I like the approach of uh, going to the people. I'm a, I'm a community organizer for 28 years with our, our Minneapolis Police Department. I was a community organizer getting uh, people to just sit at the table and talk to each other and uh, uh, being able to solve problems with people that are experiencing them directly or have have tried some things that have worked and the best practices are shared uh so that's that's fantastic what uh what kind of a time frame do you have for uh possibly putting this into production is this uh is this on the fast track now or do you have prototypes yeah, so, out there oh it's fully on fast track we also published a book on it now we'll share the book with you uh, you know like uh, also and then uh, right now we're looking for investment the biggest challenge is the the molding investment right now we just vacuum forming we just take a little aluminium and vacuum form and the cost is pretty high because vacuum form is very expensive uh, if you do we are planning to do injection mold the polycarbonate uh, shells 
and then you know like uh, once that comes in the cost drops in you know phenomenally uh, well and then it becomes viable for the market so we are looking at uh, a little bit of investment over there uh, and a time uh, around 6 months more for the mass production uh, currently we have around 10 pilots one pilot luther is your, we book for you uh, we will we'll ship it to your museum which is a promise for a year now we are so sorry we are on the you know academic side so we are very slow but you know now we want to really you know not delay any more I really appreciate that. This is uh the goal of the museum is to have one of every uh unique cooker and I don't know of any other cooker like the Sola cooker. It's uh, yeah. uh and and part of me is a uh, uh very anti-plastic, but the polycarbonate is a kind of plastic that will it will endure. It will not end up in the rivers and lakes and oceans. Uh exactly. it is a useful permanent uh, uh appliance. so uh, i have to applaud that choice very you know lightweight uh, inexpensive uh so yeah i'm looking forward to that um in fact uh i have a milan kulkarni's uh, sun dish in one of the windows of my uh, wife's office in our home on the second floor so it catches all the sun as it gets over our neighbor's house The other window will have the sola cooker as yeah. soon as it arrives. Thank you so much. It will be <laughs> yes. a pleasure. We're looking forward for the picture. We'll ship it to you, and then we'll look forward for you to send the picture to us. Excellent. Uh, Thank you for that. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of other uh, items as far as the students uh, working on this. I just love the two. I the two videos I saw. The one's two or three minutes, and the other's about half an hour about the creative process. um that alone is a it's like a master class in how to put together anything uh you know what the pitfalls are and and how to how to leap over them or endure them <laughs> and get on to the next step um are there any other solar related projects the students are working on right now or that you're interested yeah. in yeah oh, we worked on solar dryers uh, uh, like uh, luther and then uh, the country has a lot of sun and a lot of vegetable production in a particular time of the year and a lot of vegetables get wasted because they're not drying it so we 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 worked on some dryers and i must tell you this very interesting insight there are scientists sitting in large scientific organizations and they create dryers but these scientists for example uh, like are uh, uh, basically not even looking at the produce but we went to the field we found out that the people who dry products actually design the dryers Uh, for a particular uh, sort of uh, what do you call uh, for a particular uh, specific uh, ingredient so that's where we learned that you know like remember that you know so, you know like we called it the sunrise so it's very important to make it very efficient for at least one particular thing so we learned from the dryers there's an onion dryer in the country he he actually sets up onion dryers uh, across the rural area people dry onions and they send it to all the large companies like nestle and all for their production so it's it's really really fabulous so we learned from him that you know uh, research can happen but context where you use it for what purpose you use is very very important sure you're saying the onions drying onions in fact i must tell you the secret there was a scientist who worked for five scientists for five years they created this dryer this rural guy you know was also an engineer he said why should i dry onion as it is so what he does is he takes out the onion chops them he blow dries it first and then puts it in the oven so he is 50% more efficient than the than the scientist dryer <laughs> so that's the whole challenge of smartness you know blow dry first using fan and then then put it for the drying so you know like it's much faster hmm. well and and that would have to apply to uh, most most are all vegetables right i mean uh, maybe onions have a specific amount of time yeah. and moisture content you have to worry about but otherwise it's it's the same process right yeah wow uh one thought i've had is uh uh we have some cooker makers in the states that uh want to go hybrid uh they they really encourage hybrid cookers you maybe heard of david chocker with the uh, sun bd corporation he actually acquired this hybrid cooker from india um and he's modified it with a a cardboard an industrial strength cardboard to expand the capacity 
And if the sun shines, you cook with the sun. If it doesn't, it's got the heating element that you just turn on and it's a low or high, just like a crock pot or a slow cooker. Um, is that one possibility in the future for, for the solar cooker to have that in case the clouds roll in? Or uh, do you have monsoon seasons in some areas yeah, of the country? Yeah. Uh, in fact, when we started thinking about that, uh, though we were just wondering, because our cookers are always uh, for saving money. It's interesting in India. They want to save the gas cost, which is very expensive. So if you're, you're not doing a standalone cooker, so we really don't need to have any other source over there. Our electricity is not used much for cooking anyway in the country. So our purpose was that when is sun, when sun is there, you cook. And if it doesn't cook, take out your food, put in your gas. So we are, we are only saving the gas, whereas uh, to save money rather than cook for the, you know, like uh, cook for, uh, you know, like uh, either sustainability or it of course is sustainable, but our purpose is actually to save money. The main purpose is to save money, uh, save uh, fossil fuels. And then sort of, you know, like the secondary goal is better taste, uh, free, free fuel, and all those are quite secondary. So then only the product sells. And the cost of the product can be retrieved in, we are saying, uh, around two years. You can get back your cost if you're regularly cooking your rice uh, in India. Whereas abroad, it's much, much difficult because of the amount of sun you have. In our country, even in winter, in, in the summer, if my rice cooks in one and a half hours, in, in, in winter, it takes two and a half hours. That's all. And, and then I don't need rice immediately. I, I put my rice in the morning. And I get it at 12 o'clock. I feel, do all my other words. And the most beautiful part is it is warm and nice. It never burns. And you, whenever you want, you get it hot, which is impossible in the normal conditions. Sure. So we are well, seeing, the, uh, seeing these you know, better advantages. <laughs> um, one other thought about the drying. Drying is uh, Sun Oven, uh, the Sun Oven Company, uh, they have set up a rack, a set of three racks that you can put in their their regular sized uh, box cooker, uh, so you can dry with it. You basically, instead of sealing the lid, you open the lid and you put the little tab under it, so the lid is open by just a, a crack, so it, it can dry. And I've heard of people having great success with that. Is that uh, something that you could consider as a design option, uh, an alter, something that where maybe people could leave the back door open a, a jar or something for drying? Yes, yes, we did try that. We have a, we have pre prepared a black uh, mesh. Uh, we add it on the oven and we have two levers. So when I put the first buckle, uh, it is for drying. When I put the next buckle, it is for cooking. And Luther, I must tell you the secret now. When it is on the third buckle, it is for room heating. Oh, wow. Sure, sure. And, and, and it is fabulous. Uh, I have a small heat exchanger inside with the fan, with a solar panel and with, with heat sinks. And uh, the, the hot air blows from that fan and it gets into the room. And the temperature went up by 10 degrees in India. So abroad, uh, you know, for the type of temperatures you have, if the sun shines, when you come back from your vacation, your house is warm. You, you enter a warm house, you'll never enter a cold house again. So, my, so finally, we call it pivoting. So I was saying that people will buy our oven for room heating and sometimes they will cook. So that's what we are thinking about. Sure. That, that actually reminds me, uh, there's a, a woman in Colorado who uh, uh, has a YouTube channel called Frugal Green Girl, as someone who really is interested in saving money, expenses, family, household expenses. And she put together a box made of greenhouse glass, which is polycarbonate, you know, ribbed with the space in between, and just literally uh, hung it out her window, yeah. not not for cooking, but exactly for what you're saying, for heating this one room that was maybe quite a ways away from the furnace. And so it didn't heat up as well as the rest of the house, but the, it probably could cook too. And so she, she does double duty. It helps uh, heat up that room and uh, so forth. I'll send you the link to her, uh, her uh, YouTube video with that. So, so we yeah. created a wooden box on our terrace so during winter. And we kept on fan. The fan and the solar panel ran for free because of a small solar panel. It's interesting, Luther. When the sun shines bright and when the heat sink is hot, the fan goes fast. When the sun is light, <laughs> automatically the fan slows down. So it's very interesting that this is, the control is automatic. Depending upon how your thing is, your you know like uh, your uh, you know like hot air is blowing into the house and you know it keeps you warm. Sure. Well, and the is the fan. Uh... 
it's it's a, like solar little tiny solar panels that get the fan going inside or is it something yeah, yeah. This is, the, the solar panel also is inside the oven though it, because the oven no longer gets more hotter than 70 80 degrees so the solar panel is inside so it's instead of, instead of putting a box of food you're not putting this box Right. And uh, it's there in my recent video. I'll share the video with you. So, uh, like, so you you just put a box with a panel and a fan in the front uh, inside the oven, rather than and then keep it three three uh, you know three stages open. So the first stage is cooking, when full close cooking, half stage uh, drying, uh, and third stage uh, room heating. And uh -huh. thought just occurred to me, we're using technology to help the process. But the sun is still calling the shots. <laughs> it's still the, <laughs> it's what I'm yeah. saying. It's like the fan speed is due to how much sun there is. It's, so, true. Uh, it's just a thing of beauty to 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 think about this. I, well, I, I guess one question I do have is uh, how do students uh, get into this process for creating stuff like this at the at the institute? Is it uh, so, um, part of a degree program, or can anyone sign up? Yeah, it's a postgraduate degree, Luther. They have they come come with engineering degree already and we teach them design like look for problems and and build solutions for those problems so this came out of that type of very you know out of the box ideas come because of that and we teach them one year foundation and this solar cooker happened as their thesis project so that's a full time six months work and after the student left i didn't give up the project uh, we worked on it for another three to four years continuously. With you saw how we made a glass one because the glass shells are too expensive. They're vacuum glass shells. Of course, they work, but they're not as good as polycarbonate. So then we did those experiments, and then we said we did we did a large volume, uh, large volume oven, and that's a large volume. The air heating it takes too much of time. We did we shrank the volume, uh, and then you know like uh, as soon as we shrank the volume as much as the box, our efficiency increased fifteen percent. So air volume is very critical in our closed box cooking. So we have to keep the air volume low. We learned all that. And then, you know, finally, you know, we reached this stage of, uh, you know, because you're investing so much money in tooling, you can't invest uh, on something which will not work. So we had to do these three pilots. So once the three pilots uh, are, you know, like nearly there, now we will go head on and, you know, invest on the tooling and take things forward. That's great. So they're already they've already have a, an engineering background or, or other sciences before engineering they... or architecture, and then they do design and they get a postgraduate degree called Master of Design. Okay. So like it's called Masters in Design. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Well, again, I like I keep saying I can't think of any other questions, and another one comes up. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. thank you so much, think... Luther, for this uh, yes. you know uh, for this support and of course for the encouragement. Uh, look forward and you know uh, also gives us more push to take the product forward yeah okay well thanks so much and uh we will yeah. we will stop the recording here and uh if anything else comes up we can thank you uh, yeah get back to you okay bye bye